Okay, I think we're good to go. We're good to go. I believe so. <clears throat> okay, Marcy, you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we're good. Yep. Okay, very good. Uh, I, I'd like to welcome those who are here in the audience today, and very specifically, uh, Council uh, Vice President Alberger and Council Member Pitzker. Uh, although you won't be our uh, able to scrutinize this year's budget uh, the way you have in the past, and all your scrutinization has been extremely helpful to me. Uh, I'd like to ask you to please don't hesitate in your position as non-council members to call me, to give me advice, to uh, let me know what you think, because your input has always made the budget better. So I appreciate you, both of you being here. I'd like to also welcome all of those uh, who are joining us on Zoom this morning. Uh, you know, during the past several weeks, Business Administrator Chuck Volker, Chief Financial Officer Donnell Bright, and I have been meeting with Municipal Department Head and reviewing and discussing uh, their budget-related departmental requirements and their plans for 2022. The entire staff has started their 2022 budget development process with my direction that they look for cost savings opportunities in every departmental line item. The municipal budget development process and the related statutory budget deadlines are governed and directed by the New Jersey Division of Local Government Services, which has the statutory responsibility for developing and implementing state of New Jersey rules and regulations on the financial operations and the fiscal reporting and overseeing the fiscal condition of all New Jersey municipalities. The following are four key statutory budget deadlines and processes that the New Jersey Division of Local Government Services require all municipalities to meet and to follow. Statutory deadline number one. This statutory deadline in process relates to the development of the municipal budget. It says that the mayor is required to provide one public hearing, which must take place during the month of November where the department has reviewed their budget request with the mayor. Today's hybrid in-person Zoom budget hearing meeting meets that statutory requirement. For the benefit of those who are not, who, who are not able to attend this public hearing, either in person or by Zoom, this budget hearing will be recorded and made available by YouTube through the town's official website. While not required by the New Jersey Division of Local Government Services, as part of the teamwork process that I have established with the council during these past two years that I've served as mayor, as soon as the 2022 council reorganizes and elects its membership, its leadership, I will coordinate a date and time with the council president where the department heads and I can again review the proposed budget in a public meeting, but this time specifically for and with the participation of the council. Statutory requirement number two. This is a statutory deadline for the mayor to provide the council a copy of the proposed municipal budget. It says that the mayor is required to officially submit the proposed municipal budget to the council not later than January the 15th. I plan to meet that statutory date. Statutory requirement number three. This is the statutory deadline for the council to introduce the municipal budget at a public council meeting. The council is required to introduce the municipal budget at a public council meeting, not later than February the 10th. At this council meeting, where I will ask the council to introduce the municipal budget, I will have Chief Financial Officer Donnell Bright to provide the public and the council with a PowerPoint presentation covering key aspects of the 20. 22 budget. Statutory requirement number four. The statutory deadline for the council to approve the municipal budget at a public meeting. The council is required to approve the municipal budget at a public council meeting, and they are required to do it by the state not later than March the 30th. Because I have been meeting and continue to meet with municipal department heads and reviewing and discussing their 2022 budget-related departmental requirements and plans, 
this statutorily required November public hearing with them will be short and it'll be direct. However, it will shed some light on my budget plan and I therefore hope that those residents who are not able to view this hearing, either in person or by Zoom, will watch it later by YouTube through our municipal website. And I think with that, let's get started. Okay. Uh, the first uh, department up is general administration. Good morning, everyone. Let me just drop my mask. I know that not everybody, uh, well, the department heads have a handout if uh, the council have uh, handouts also? Um, no. Okay, no. all right. So just because want to make this, sure this, I'm- This is just our work got at it, this got point. It. And I would anticipate that before we finally present the budget to the council, there'll still be some changes. So there's no need for that at this point. And, and when we do present it to them, they will have the worksheets and all of the details that we'll have. Right. Okay, so uh, salaries and wages ha has a small increase, most of which is uh, contractual. Uh, the O and E uh, has uh, an increase of uh, approximately seven thousand. But there, if you'll know, when you do get a chance to see the budget, you'll notice that some of the lines have shifted a little bit. We have lowered in some where we did not see the necessity anymore to maintain that same amount. Uh, we increased some others. We actually moved uh, some, for example, we moved uh, the STR management company that we utilize from uh, professional services into service contracts, which is a more appropriate line for to be on. It's not that so much that the amounts are increasing, it's just a, a, a change in which the, uh, they're being moved to. Uh, when we go to um, mayor and council, everything for the year is staying the same. Uh, before, before you go to mayor and council, I just want to make a note, Chuck, and thank you. I had asked each department had to look at every line item for possible savings. And I'm, uh, I'm pleased with the fact that uh, there's a 64% reduction in professional services and a 20% reduction in memberships and publications. That means that we aren't simply just getting these books and these membership things and not use them. So every little line item helps and I'd like to thank you for those reductions. Mayor and council have been as frugal as usual. Uh, their uh, budget is not changing at all from what it was in uh, 2021. Okay. Uh, legal services, uh, while the inc there's an increase uh, overall, uh, we have shifted some of that those lines around because we do not see the need. We have lowered, for example, our bond council down. We don't expect to need them as much this year. We've also lowered our labor because we have settled uh, or will have settled several contracts by the end of this year. There will be no uh, negotiations or uh, contracts going on in 2022. Uh, the increase uh, primarily came for uh, litigation, which we expect we might have an increase in due to uh, ongoing litigation that's, that will be continuing in 2022. Uh, our engineering services is staying the same. I think that our township engineer has done quite well for us, you know, over the course of the uh, six years that I've been here in terms of uh, get, we getting a lot for our, our, our dollars there and has uh, done a lot of excellent projects for us. Uh, technology is uh, essentially staying the same, even though we will be uh, changing over our website uh, we're having it redesigned on a, and put on a better platform. It will essentially look the same, but it will give us greater capabilities to do more with the individual departments. So for example, if the building department wanted to do more with uh, a tutorial on, on how to uh, do certain aspects of filling out a um, permit or uh, some other questions that might ordinarily come up with uh, individual homeowners, they can do that as well. So I think that that's going to help uh, all of the departments overall because they can add things on there that they don't normally have, and it will be uh, more educational for the public at large. Going over the commissions and the committees, uh, 
we've kept it, uh, actually lowered it a bit. However, some of the money has been redistributed. Um, some have been uh, lowered and like I said, just moved around, but overall it's a uh, it's $1,000 lower than uh, it has been uh, in 2021. Another area where we saved it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thanks. Okay, Thanks. Okay, the next is for, I don't know if we'll go up here or go down there. Or like, <laughs> I think the air is going down there. Good morning, Marcy. Uh, just salaries, wages, L&A. Yeah. 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 Um, our salaries and wages um, did go up. That's contractual. Um, and oh, what else? I'm sorry. Uh, just the O&E line, like the, the major O&E line. Uh, it went it down a little bit to the 6,700. 60,700 is what I should say. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, actually, our salary, uh, our O and E went down a little bit. Um, we pretty much stayed the same. The only um, I actually we went down on a lot of things. Um, education we went down. Um, folks office went down. Computer software. Um, also contractual services. Um, codification is the only line item that we went up. Um, that's just something we can help when we have ordinances, they have to be codified. Um, we also went down in membership and publications. So our um, bottom line is less. Well, Marcia, I, I, again, I, what I really want to focus on is that the, one of the directions that I gave is that every department had looked at every line item for possible savings. And uh, although I didn't hire you as a clerk, you have proven during the two years I've been here to be an excellent hire. You have literally taken that department and you've looked at that in detail. And you've said, we don't need this. We don't need this. And when it's not that we, are, we, we don't need this service, but you've been doing it. You've taken it on yourself. Many, many people don't really know that. Uh, there's a 50% reduction in education seminars and, and, and meetings. And I, and I know you don't cheat your people or yourself out of the education that they needed, but you're saying, we just don't need this. Uh, I see there's a 25% reduction in computer software support, and there's a 40% reduction in contracted services, 11% reduction in memberships and publications. So I really, really appreciate and have great respect for that. Thank you for the excellent job that you're doing. The bottom line is that you're providing excellent services and, and in view of the fact that 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 area has literally gone down. And the only area that has increased is contractual. And that's contractual aid. Thank you very much, Marcy. Thank you. Um, so finance and audit is next. <clears throat> uh, for finance salaries and wages, um, it's a slight increase. Um, that's due to our union obligations, contractual obligations um, for 2022. Uh, my O&E line is down um, about $5,000. And the reason why that is, is I dropped our financial consulting um, by $5,000 because we only have one um, band sale per year. Whereas in the past, when I first came here, we had four sales per year. So they get charged, they charge us for every single one of those. So we only have one now. Um, so the finance total, the O&E is uh, around 15,000. Um, the audit services for next year, I just anticipated um, after discussing with the auditor uh, what they would expect next year. So that's just going up a small amount uh, to 45,800. Excellent, thank you. Um, tax collection is next. Good morning, Good morning Lisa. So um, we had a slight increase in salary that's contractual. Overall, uh, for OE, our budget went down by 34.50 for the year. We decreased a 
couple of things. And the only increase was for the computer service, which is admin. And that's pretty much it. I noticed you've got a 33% a uh, uh, decrease in office supplies, and I'm sure you aren't cheating yourself out of anything. That's probably you paying attention to detail and looking at what we really, really, really need. Uh, education conferences, I see there's a 49% uh, a, a decrease there. Uh, that means someone's not going to be continuing to take courses or something of that nature. No, no. I only attend the spring conference. I don't do the week. Um, I just, I don't like it. And it's, it doesn't cost more than $2,500. Good, good. Uh, for spring. And there's, there's a 50% reduction in a, in a category called rec of tax. Can you explain to me what that's about? That is the recording of the uh, municipal held tax sales certificates that we have to record with the county for $8 each. Yeah. The only thing that scares me with that is we have, as you know, almost 500 of the hotel on the tax yeah. sale. Why is that down 50%? Well, I, I'm glad, but I'm just get this to educate well, me in the public. Honestly, when, I, when I did the budget, I pretty much kept everything the same, but then I never had a preliminary meeting with you guys. So I really only saw that this went down on Friday. Okay. Um, when, this, when we were looking at the actuals that were spent, so it was based on the actuals that were spent. So in the past, if you look like 2019, we only spent $168. It was just... Okay. Kind of just made sense to decrease it, um, but there's enough in here that if, like for example, for computer services, um, we saved money when we went out a couple of years ago um, for competitive contract, and we and we had admins. So there's there's a little bit in some of these lines that if for some reason the recording of the tax um, certificates are extra, mm -hmm. um, we would be able to cover it in some of these. Yeah. Um, but also, if absolutely necessary, we could always we could do a transfer in November if we thought that okay. was necessary. But I don't. Thank you. Thank you. Tax assessment. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our salary and wages are going up. Uh, we have union employees, and so these are contractual increases. Overall, our O&E line is going down slightly, about $1,000. Um, pretty much everything is the same. There's some shifting um, of categories of some of our expenses. Um, it is worth noting we do have, in quarter one of 2022, a uh, tax court trial scheduled in Newark. So our um, $20,000 tax appraisal line will be used next year for the site anticipated to meet. So number one, have them as a witness at the trial. And number two, if needs to prepare a trial ready uh, appraisal report that will be costly. Other than that, no change. What's the reason for the 2% decline in the uh, reassessment line item? We have shifted, um, it's really more of a shift. So the township is paying for the tablet software. This enables us as a town for our regular ad and assessment inspections or just any kind of appeal inspection or whatever, for us to utilize the software that the company would also be using. So we've shifted that expense onto the township and in doing so we've lowered the reassessment contract price um, to cover that expense. But we get a chance to use a piece of very valuable equipment. Yeah, the yeah. software really- Software. Takes, yeah, it takes um, away the need for data entry, so kind of less hands on the data being collected during inspection. So you don't have maybe like a like a like a type of type error happening mm -hmm. in between doing the inspection on paper and manually entering the data. It's just more efficient. Yes, very good. Very good. Thank you. You're uh, land use. Took a little bit from the professionals. We still have the master plan to do so. 
They're not all the way down where I want them to be, but maybe next year. Yeah. I noticed you also, I'm, I'm pleased to see everybody scrutinizing all of the memberships and publications that they're getting to make sure that there are things that we are not buying just because they're out there. And I noticed that uh, there's a good savings, a 33% savings in that line item. I do appreciate that. Uh, I see uh, I see a 13% uh, savings are in, in the legal category and 6% uh, savings in the retainer for the planner and a 50, 57% savings in advertising. Uh, all of those are good things. Appreciate you taking the time to pay attention to those individual line items. So it's every little bit helps. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Building department next. Basically, the salary and wages went up. The one I guess with the rest of the departments, mostly contractual. Uh, as far as the various fines, let me just take them one at a time, and they're very easy. All the supplies, uh, we lowered, we were able to lower that by two hundred fifty dollars. Most of that due to process changes within the department. Uh, have uh, seen a reduction mostly, and I'm probably for many of the departments, same thing with the use of Zoom. Our inspectors have to take a lot of classes during the course of the year, but they're not necessarily going out on the road. As you uh, materials and supplies, uh, it stayed the same. Uh, services was a jump of $300, and that's really driven by uh, uh, spatial data logic. Actual training uh, yeah, for, our, for our program for uh, building department. Uh, we have, I forget how many user agreements or licenses within the department. So they didn't jump last year, but they did jump this year. So that's kind of good. And the last one there, and we bring up a comment about the membership and publications. Mine jumped from 16 to uh, 2000, but as I explained to Donnell, we look back at the Past two years. The past two years, they're usually they're lower. And that happens because every three years, the code changes building, plumbing, electric, building, and fire. With that, we have to buy additional software programs for our computer and uh, many books for the guys to have at the desk and in the field. So this year, there's a code change. So we're up $400. Bottom line, uh, overall, uh, I'm up 200. There I'm requesting an additional $250 uh, for my O&E, and that can really come back to STL. Other than that, we've held the line. Bob, I, I'd, I'd like to say that, as you so well know, the building department is one department that was really challenged from a standpoint of both service and image uh, before we hired you. And uh, while these numbers are good, I think that uh, many people may or may not know about some of the real facts and changes behind that. Uh, I know that it takes uh, a long time to change an attitude. Psychiatrists and psychologists and others who study human behavior tell us it takes some time, a whole generation to change an attitude. I hope it won't take a whole generation, but it does. Uh, and, and so uh, for you to turn around the image of the building department is going to take much, much longer. You're in the process of doing that. But just to, just to share some things here, uh, we are providing the council uh, reports every six months on your performance. And, and uh, we don't have the ones, of course, for the last six months, but we will when we present this budget to the council. But just for the first six months, uh, you had conducted actually 75% more inspections than you did in 2020. That was just in the, in, in the, in the first six months. And this is an outstanding rate of performance when you consider the fact we've got a 70 square mile town. And uh, these three, these are inspection results in the building department issuing uh, 1,130 uh, 1, more permits during the first six months of this year, almost as many as they did during the whole 
six months, a whole year of last year. So there's some other statistics too that I'll be prepared to cite. And I want you to take pride in being able to verbalize too when we when we present the, the final budget to the to the to the council. But I want to thank you very much for that. You're doing a good job. It's a tough spot that you're in. It really is. Uh, but you're doing an excellent job. Continue to move forward and we'll continue to try to turn this ship around together. Thank you. I'd like to add this it's the way we look at the process and usually when the two inspectors are on the road more effectively which i have to add was based on the committee last year and yourself and chuck that now open to change the, the way we use the inspectors and they were remunerated for their additional licenses etc so it proved that if we do take the existing people and use it more effectively, which might cost a couple extra dollars, proved to be well worth it. Well, you, I tell you, 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 you're, you're already clearly on your way uh, to actually providing this building service to the town at no cost because the funds that you're bringing in are. are are, are at least very close to, uh, we'll see at the end, we don't have to verbalize that now, will we'll probably pay for all of your salaries and wages in your administration, so we'll see. But thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, the next group, is in charge. I can go through those numbers. Um, we are with the state health benefits, so the state health benefits had major increases um, for the retirees this year, specifically for prescriptions. Um, so our total line item is going up to 3.2 million, um, and that's something that we're, um, we're with the state health benefits, so we can't really control that. Um, there was minor increases on the existing employees, um, current employees, I should say, um, just uh, around 2% increases on the retirees were enormous. Um, so I tried to keep that as tight as I could um, at the 3.2. Unemployment, I'm dropping that down to 2000. This is a line item where we put money into our unemployment trust fund. So in the past, it's been 10,000 a year. I'm pretty satisfied where we are with that trust fund right now. So um, while I don't, you know, I don't anticipate needing an extra 10,000, I think keeping it at 2000 is, is fine for now. Um, our regular insurance uh, increased, I'm increasing up to 580. Again, it's a, it's a nominal increase. Um, for what that line was in the past. That has to do with our deductibles. I've increased those deductibles because um, we've been over that amount uh, for the past couple of years. Our workers' comp insurance, again, it's a, an increase there. It's just what I anticipate um, for next year to be. And that's around 405. Good. Next department, police, dispatch, animal control, and OEM. Before I get started, I just wanted to compliment and uh, thank you, Captain. Captain put together our police uh, budget, radio communications, uh, animal control, uh, an outstanding job. Um, of course, we review things together, but uh, he did the review phase of it, so I appreciate his hard work. Excellent. Uh, so I'm going to jump right into uh, police department salary wages. Uh, there's a there's a total increase overall that is contractual as it relates to regular salaries, longevity, um, and the administrative uh, office work. Moving on to police department total uh, operating expenses, there's a total of 15 line items there. Of those 15 line items, 13 remain the same. There was no increase for those 13. There's a slight increase for two of them. Uh, one of those is service contracts. As you know, we have multiple vendors that we, we partner with and work with to operate effectively. And sometimes those names are used for uh, The other line item that went up slightly is our community police academy. We're especially, especially proud of that program. Uh, it continues to expand every year, and uh, this year we had the best turnout so far that we've ever had. And our goal is to be able to maintain this program for all kids in Vernon Township um, and minimize the cost impact on families. So if they want to be able to send the kids, the kids want to come. I don't want the financial uh, roadblock to stop them. So that's why we're asking for a slight increase in that. Uh, moving on to radio communication, salary, and wages, there is a also a slight increase. That is as it relates to uh, contractually for salary and wages. We're also asking for a second increase to coincide with that for overtime. 
down into weighted communication total for um, operating expenses. There was just one slight increase that is contractual. That's for Moving into M control mass capacity. M control salary wages. Um, we're staying flat on that. Um, staying the same. I think uh, when we move down to operating expenses, ground control, you did see a slight uptick in uh, most line items in that as we secured um, four new outside or shared service agreements with other municipalities. With that being said, we took some of that uh, forecasted revenue uh, to put that back to, into the animal control unit by increasing materials and supplies, uh, medical supplies and food as we anticipate uh, receiving more animals, uh, spay and neuter, and uh, professional services. As having these other four municipalities come on board with Vernon Township, we, uh, we forecast that we'll have some uptick in expenses. That as stated, that that should be taken care of by uh, the revenue that we, that we have from the insurance service. And moving into our last section, um, the Office of Emergency Management, there was a slight increase for salary and wages. Uh, that's salary and wages specifically for uh, stipends. Uh, the OEMs and other entities. And if we move down into operating expenses, that remains the same amount. Any questions? No, I just got, I just like to make a comment that uh, I, I really think that your department does such an excellent job uh, with what our Polish department cost us and for what it really means to the town. Uh, a lot of it you can't, can't even quantify in terms of the respect that the people have for our Polish department in, in terms of, of, of how people feel about living in Vernon Township. People feel safe here. They feel good here. And I am so glad to see you. Uh, I'm glad to see the increase, the $1,000 increase in your junior police academy. That is so valuable. That is so valuable. I, I felt so good attending uh, the graduation last year and seeing the parents' face. But people really love that. And, and Chief, you're very, very creative. And I want you to continue that. You've got my support on that. And I guess the last thing uh, is the animal control. Uh, I, I just can't believe how much that has changed. I, I've lived in this town now for almost 42 years. And, 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 and my wife and I don't have an animal, but all the people around us do. And there were not some very good things that were being said about our animal control organization. And here now, it is so good that we've got four other municipalities who want a part of it, who, who looked at us and see the kind of quality that we have and said, we want you to provide that services. And uh, I mean, it's just all good things. It's just all good things. And at a day and a time where many people, whether it's mayors or civilians, um, don't have very good things to say about their relationships with their police department, I am just so honored that I can stand on a soapbox and 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 look people in the face and and tell the truth because you guys are doing a good job. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Appreciate those guys. Volunteer emergency uh, services next, and then followed by fire prevention. Lou, I think, is on his way in, um, but I can go through the volunteer emergency services. Um, the amounts for the fire departments and the ambulance reimbursements are staying the same at 45,000 and 35,000. Um, the equipment repair and maintenance um, for volunteer emergency services is staying the same at 30,000. The same thing with the state fire mandate, that's for um, the testing um, that we have. And then the clothing allowance is also staying the same for 2022 at 30,000. And uh, Lou is here for the, uh, fire prevention. Okay, so. Wages are going from 169 to 180,000. That's contractual, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, o and E is pretty much the same. It's going from 14,950 to 14,650. Slight decrease. 
And I, I see one of the uh, things that was a 50% decrease in, uh, in office supplies. Yeah. Good. Uh, you know, we're looking at what we're using, what we really need, and not buying stuff we don't need, and using what we've got in a more cost-effective and efficient manner. Absolutely. Good. Very good. Thank you. You're on a good ship. That's it. Not a lot to have to report. Good job. Thank you. Did the DPW next? Good morning. Good morning. Salaries. Good. Um, the goals for us have actually gone down. Uh, we've uh, got to make a couple of adjustments uh, in different accounts, but uh, the only one that basically went up was the green removal. Uh, the compass is our road sweepings uh, that's mandatory for uh, the regulations. Um, like I said, though, the OD for that basically has gone down like $37,000. So, I think I just want to make a comment. Um, I did just so that everybody knows we did decrease the snow and ice removal, but the reason why I did that was because we have um, a well funded snow um, trust, a storm removal trust. Um, we just moved some more money into it at this past meeting. So I think that we're, I'm pretty confident that we should be well next year. Uh, next up, recycling. Uh, so, always again, uh, a slight increase. Uh, our summer recycling guys are, are part time. Uh, we just raised it up uh, approximately about five hundred dollars uh, to cover a little more money. Uh, the one thing that we did do uh, is we had to raise up our contract goals, uh obligations for recycling. This is the fact of uh, our recycling uh, containers being that maintenance, and also some fees that went up through the school. But overall, our uh, OE. Is only about up a thousand dollars, so uh, that's I think that's pretty good. Um, and moving on, building the building the grounds, uh, salaries again, uh, based on uh, a practical that would only up a thousand dollars. Uh, the O and E, uh, there's only one thing that basically we had to add more money to, and that was the contractual staff. Uh, we, uh, we had to add more money to that because of our boilers. We never had an agreement with any of our, any of our contractors to service our boilers. Uh, so we needed to have that done, especially now the new boiler going into the for wintertime. Uh, now overall, that's, uh, that's only gone up uh, $2,000. So we're, we're, we're kind of pretty close to the cut. So we're trying to see what we can. Um, lead, lead again, as far as salary goes, is based on uh, the contractual agreements. Um, there's as far as the ONE goes, actually went down uh, based on, uh, like Bill just said, there's, there's some things that, that uh, we, we were doing as far as leasing our equipment. Uh, we've had some, uh, some figures that were moving up higher for the older stuff, but since we're getting the new stuff as we go along, there's less maintenance, right? So we we're able to cut, we we're able to cut it down a little bit. Um, so we actually went down uh, the ONE was. Actually, I'm sorry, uh, about 500 bucks, so it's not too bad. Um, the overall total is for fleet, uh, I'm going up uh, $11,000. So, unfortunately, it is what it is. Uh, it's around it. uh, there's a couple of things we had to adjust here and here, but uh, we're working on it. Let's see, parks. Parks, again, as far as salaries go, it's on contractual. Um, seasonal, we actually lowered a little bit. Uh, due to application applications coming in uh, as far as the uh, O&E, uh, the O&E actually uh, went down uh, as far as the maintenance goes for the fields. Uh, so we're, we're looking at about $16,000 overall that we cut from those two parts. Uh, and, and the overall department of public works, uh, the thing is roughly about a little less than $100,000 that we do with enough. Well, then, I, I, you know, in a, in a day and time when everything is increasing, uh, uh, 
for you to be able to lower some of those prices for you and Donnell to work together. It's really, really been good. Um, uh, and as we go to the final budget, I want to ask you guys to take another look at that uh, because uh, there's nothing this year that's cheaper than it was last year. And if we have to increase something a little different, we'll do it. But I appreciate you, you know, looking at these line items and doing doing a good job that you're doing. So it, 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 uh, other, other basically, other than contractual salaries are, you know, your stuff is either flat or going down. We're trying to maintain it, but again, we're, we're a team. We're trying to. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Go a little bit out of order because Michelle's on her way in, but I can do. Um, I'm going to do the municipal court. Lindsay um, is off today, so I'm just going to go through municipal court first, and then Michelle can come in and do seniors and recreations. Uh, so for the municipal court um, for 2022, the salaries and wages, um, it, contractual increases, so that's going to 184. Um, for municipal O and E, that's actually a slight decrease. Um, going through the amounts that we've been spending in the past and talking with Lindsay, um, we just felt like, you know, for education conferences and seminars, the majority of their seminars, which previously mentioned, um, are now on Zoom. So they don't have to pay um, to go any places and have to contribute uh, towards that expense. So we were able to decrease that line specifically um, to bring that line, the O&E down. The prosecutor, um, I don't know what next year's contract will be yet. I know that we're still negotiating that. So I did um, adjust for a slight increase. Um, we'll know better when, when we have a finalized contract there. So that's it for municipal sports. And Michelle is here to discuss senior, rec senior center and recreation. Good morning. Good morning. If you're talking, you can take it down. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You can just go like the major O and E line, and if there's anything that sticks out to you, um, I know for senior for salaries, I just want um, to mention this. In the past, and Michelle, you could probably go into this in more detail. We've had um, some workers from the county, right? Yeah. And um, we no longer have those. Program, yeah, go ahead. Send people like we were one of their um, employers for them. Right, and we no longer um, the county no longer provides that after a period of time. Somebody. And I don't want to say ages out, but like kind of yeah. ages out over time. Um, so we were no longer given that employee by the county and they didn't have anybody to help with the senior center. Um, so we did have to hire a part time that part time person so that we could have coverage in our senior center so that we'd have enough coverage um, for the seniors to be able to pick up their lunches and have um, their events that they that they have. Yes. And I believe um, we're looking to open completely now January. Oh great. Uh, so Before you leave that, uh, uh, can you tell me, Michelle, why we have a 40% a de decrease in equipment for senior citizens? What is that about? Um, well, that line is for if we have any repairs or um, new equipment to purchase, but we did uh, arrange with the county to purchase a new cooler, which is on order. So we're hoping, you know, the other equipment will be okay. So basically, you decrease that line item because of what? The county, um, our one refrigerator broke this year. Yeah. From the coolers and the county is purchasing it for the nutrition site. Um, so we don't anticipate needing any type of major repairs or equipment purchases next year. Okay, good. Okay. So, you know, that's just one place we're able to save a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. 
All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so recreation salaries um, has quite a big increase at 115,000, but that, um, that is planning for part time staffing at the pump track. Out of many different people, it would be to keep that staff during the prime season. Um, but basically, I think we talked about February to November. So that is a large part of that increase, and also a part time person um, to help keep all of the programs that we have going um, manageable. And then your O and E thing. Set to stay the same. Basically, the equipment rental went up a little bit. Uh, again, anticipating for putting porta potties at the pump truck. Otherwise, it's basically the same. So that only is at seventy-five thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. Great. I don't have any questions. Okay. Any questions, everybody? Okay, thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you. Okay, so the last um, one of the last sets I have are shared services and grants, and then we'll go into utilities um, and the SCUMA line, as well as statutory obligations um, and the Municipal Service Act reimbursements, and then capital debt and reserve for uncollected taxes. Um, so the first up is the shared services and grants. This I can't talk about that. Um, for shared services and grants, um, our radio communications line is saying the same. I believe that was a three-year contract. Um, animal control, as the chief had previously mentioned, we have um, four new animal um, control shared service agreements that the council just passed. Um, so that would, that's a large increase. Um, we also passed an additional um, financial administration uh, shared service with the MUA this year. So that is an increase as well. Um, the senior citizens for the shared service that we have uh, with the county that is staying the same at 27,000. So we will see a large increase in shared services, which is good, up to 209,000 from 147,000. Um, our grants for next year. So we do not anticipate the clean communities until after it comes in. So it usually comes in middle, uh, middle of the year. So this year we got 55,000. So even though it won't be in the budget, I anticipate around the same um, coming in next year and we'll do uh, an amendment to the budget when that comes in. <laughs> Um, the drive silver get pulled over grants. Those are the year-end grants, um, anticipating 5,500. Uh, last year, we did have um, the body-worn camera grants. Um, so we just got some money in for that. Uh, that's obviously a one-time um, use from the state of New Jersey. So that will not be in again this year. Um, the Municipal Alliance Committee already approved the $7,400 for their grant. Um, the federal body armor grant is now up to almost 5,000, it's 49. 5075. Uh, so that's been great. That's been um, increasing every year. So that's great for the police department. And I'm waiting for the number for the body armor um, for the state portion of that. And our safe and secure from the feds is staying at 32,400, which again is still a large decrease from what we've had um, 2020 and prior. They decreased it last year because of COVID um, and they're continuing with that decrease. So our total in grants um, will be 50,000. Uh, it's still more than what we first anticipated last year. Um, it's just that we got in some extra during the year of 2021. On to the utility bills and to SCUMA. Um, everybody is well aware of the large increases in utilities, specifically gasoline. So uh, I did increase that line. We will have our own pumps this year. So I'm hoping that um, we won't have that big of an increase, um, but I have to anticipate because I'm not sure um, what the market will do for gasoline prices. Uh, I also obviously increased it for natural gas, um, you know, for, for electrical service, because I don't know where those are going to fall. Um, but I'm hoping that the conservative number will, will keep us um, where we need to be. We did get our preliminary numbers from SCUMA regarding their service fees, and they have increased 3% uh, to over $2 million next year. Uh, those are not item that's not a line that we can um, really do anything about. We can't control that line. Um, we have to budget for what they've charged us. So again, it's two point um, oh one million dollars next year. Uh, let's, that that two point. Okay, 
Uh, how much is the SCUMA increase? It's a 3% increase. Okay, and that's for? So um, that's for our, our SCUMA, our sewer services that um, the sewage obviously travels down to SCUMA and they treat it. Um, a portion of that, well, the bill is split into three portions. So one portion is our debt service. Yeah. Um, that amount is not changing. So that's the $1 million. Um, another portion is capital, capital expenses. So those are regular, um, you know, capital expenses that they have on other things that we just pay our portion of, um, and their operating expenses. So their capital and their operating expenses. Understand. Okay. Uh, the next area are statutory obligations and municipal service act reimbursements for statutory obligations. We did, I did finally get the numbers in from the state for both pension systems for the PERS and the PFRS. Um, they have both increased significantly. One is at 15%. I believe one, the other one's at 12%. Um, again, that's not something we can control. That's something that the state sets out and we're mandated to pay. So um, the Social Security, I increased you know, slightly um, to be where we need to be based on salaries and wages next year. Um, and DCRP, I did decrease just on um, what I'm anticipating based on our part-time employees for next year. The Municipal Service Act amount is staying at $250,000. Um, and that should cover us based on our snow expenses thus far for this year. I won't know, you know, hopefully we don't have snow this next month, but in case we do, um, it should still be enough for us. And then the finally, we have um, our capital debt and reserve for uncollected taxes. Um, so just to go over capital, we just started last year putting in lines for reserves for capital for the different departments. This is our cash capital that we're putting aside to save for things. So a good example um, for next year, we're putting in $100,000 uh, rather than the 25,000 that we put in the prior year for the fire department. That's to make sure that we have money to spend for large expenditures um, like on tankers or pump trucks or a ladder truck. Um, those, those cost a significant amount of money. So if we can put money aside rather than, you know, in the future debting out for all of those expenses, that's in the best interest of the township. Uh, so we have lines for that for fire department, emergency services, the Department of Public Works, the police department and animal control. Those all have their own reserve lines. We also have our uh, straight ca cash capital line, which is called the capital improvement fund. That is going up from $550,000 to $740,000 next year. Again, this is all towards the move um, to pay for things that should be paid in cash. Um, and then we also have lines for our capital lease payments. Those include not only our computers, which we just did uh, this year, all new Dell computers for everybody, um, but we also are including um, the police vehicles, the EMS vehicles, and the DPW vehicles in the capital lease line. So that's separate, that's all cash capital. Next year is the last year for our five-year um, emergency authorization for deferred charges for our five-year reval. So we have a $200,000 payment due on that. And then we will be done paying off the reval. That's our fifth year. Um, our bond principal payments are, slight, it's a slight decrease in our bond principal payments. Um, we just went out for bonds last year um, on some outstanding debt that we had. So that's at 1.87 million. Payment of our, what I'm anticipating to pay on our notes next year is also a decrease. It's a $400,000 decrease in the prior year. So that's at $711,000. Um, the interest on our bonds is up, but that's anticipated. That's what happens when you go out to bonds. Um, when, you're, when you start with a higher bond total, obviously the interest costs more. Um, so the interest on our bonds is 685,000. And the interest on our bands is again, a significant decrease um, from 160,000 to 60,000 that I'm anticipating next year. The interest on our emergency note, that was for our five-year reval. Sorry, I should have mentioned that before. That's um, at 1,200 and that should be, again, the last one that we have. Um, and based on our total budget, there's obviously a calculation that comes into play between our revenues um, and what our total budget appropriations are, but I'm anticipating our reserve for uncollect uncollected taxes to be at 2.7 um four or five million dollars and that is it i don't know if you have any questions about any of those items that's it thank you very much uh, i uh, i do i do appreciate all the department heads and uh for making themselves available here for this budget hearing and i really appreciate you donnell for bringing all of this together for us uh we are uh, this is not the last time we'll do this 
Uh, we'll sanitize and, and, and finalize some things before we finally present it to the council uh, and move forward. Hopefully we can get everything done. Um, as I look at the initial snapshot here, our, everybody is really taking the direction that they were given to try to save as much as we possibly can. And, and during a year when inflation is high and everything is up, uh, it is still my hope that we can bring in a budget that will have a smaller percentage increase this year over last year's budget than we had before. You know, so I hope, you know, I don't know no or not we can do it or not, but uh, we're looking at that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you guys.